Hey YouTube, it's Wisconsin Shoe Guy here and thank you for tuning in. Uh, today I'm going to do a series on what is the best dress shoe. Uh, now I know that this is a complicated uh, concept and there's a lot of different dress shoes out on the market. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to review a number of different styles today and talk about what I think makes a good shoe. Uh, we'll talk about what the different styles are and um, we'll try to uh, establish what are important things to look for. Uh, what I'm not going to do today is I'm not going to talk about brand. Um, the brand that I chose to use today for, for this discussion uh, is Allen Edmonds. It's uh, the brand that I grew up on. Uh, grew up. I didn't really start wearing them until I, I, I got married. But um, I, um, you know, it, it's really what introduced me into the world of men's shoes. And uh, I, I wore Allen Edmonds exclusively for over 20 years uh, before I started getting into a number of brands. Uh, those who watch the channel now know that I have about uh, 30, 35 brands, I guess, that I, that I, that I wear now. And uh, I am uh, on my way uh, to the magic number of 40. Um, and uh, I'm looking to build out three shoes of each brand. Um, while I'm doing that, um, I have to start letting some of the this brand, the Allen Edmonds, go because uh, I have 30 of them now, and uh, it just doesn't make sense to, you know, have 100, 150 pairs of shoes, right? Um, I I think the magic number is around 120 if I've got three or 40 brands, um, but uh, I'm probably gonna be a little bit higher than that. Um, but uh, at some point, I do need to let some of these go. So uh, most of these are in pretty good shape, although I did not polish them uh, for, for this video. Uh, really, I want to talk about the style of the shoe, not necessarily how to polish them. And some of these I've, uh, you know, intentionally let go uh, so I can do some polish videos in the future. So uh, just something to keep in mind. So we'll start the discussion off today uh, by talking about the, um, my Oxfords, okay? And I, I, I had four uh, types of um, Oxfords that I wanted to talk through today. And um, the first uh, is the most common, uh, and this is the shoe that you're going to see in most of the market. Um, this is an Allen Edmonds Bond Street. And it is a version of the Captoe Oxford. Now, this is uh, probably, if you look at the international shoe market, this is the most common example of what a regular cap toe Oxford is going to be. It's gonna have a cap toe, which is this part here. It's gonna have a heel cap, which is this part here. And it's an Oxford with the closed lacing. Now this is uh, in burgundy, and this is in a, um, a special kind of calf that's designed to stay shiny all the time, uh, which is not my favorite, but um, this is a shoe that uh, uh, Alan Edmonds actually gave me uh, because they wanted me to try it. Uh, because it has this new sole system that they have, uh, which is called the Speed Welds, and they have like a rubber pad here. They have a rubber piece in the sole, um, and uh, the inside is uh, synthetic instead of the natural cork and leather, uh, which is what I generally prefer. Uh, so I gave them a try, and uh, you know it was very kind of them to give it to me. It was part of a factory tour, and uh, thank me for you know taking the time to visit. And uh, I like the shoe. Um, I do wear it. It's in my regular rotation. Uh, which, given my shoe collection, I'm probably wearing every three months. Uh, but it's, um, uh, if I look at it, what I like best about it is that it has the classic components of the cap toe. Now, if you look at American cap toes, in general, they're different. They usually do not have the heel cap. So if you look at the epitome of the common dress shoe in America, it's the Allen Edmonds Park Avenue. And it is basically the exact same shape of a shoe, not, not the last, but the shoe, but this heel cap here is missing. Uh, the last is the shape that goes underneath that the shoe is built around. Uh, it has to do with the shape of the toe here and um, uh, the, uh, the way that the heel comes in and this part of the sole with the waist, how that is uh, developed as well. So, uh, so this is again the Bond Street and this is a black, uh, this is not black, this is burgundy cap toe Oxford. So, uh, and I've got new lighting. I hope that uh, you're able to see the color okay on the video. Now, the next one, um, and this is Oxblood, which is a very different color than, than Burgundy here, right? Uh, Oxblood, uh, which is really red. Uh, and this is what they call a quarter broke. Now, what is a quarter broke? 
Well, a quarter brogue means that it has a line of broguing here in the cap and none in the rest of the shoe. Okay? So it's a little bit less formal, uh, but it's still a formal shoe. Certainly uh, can wear it with suits, um, certainly can wear it for almost all occasions. Um, you know, uh, generally speaking, the only things that you would really not wear a quarter brogue for would be um, a, uh, I, I would say, a, a wedding, uh, if you don't have a, a casual wedding, which a lot of people are doing casual weddings now, um, or a, um, you know, certainly wouldn't wear it with a, a tuxedo, um, and you wouldn't wear it uh, um, probably at a funeral. That's, that's it. So anyway, so and I did a little contrast polish on this so that um, the lines show out a little bit more. Uh, it's also pretty far between polishes, so it's going to all need to be refreshed soon. But again, this quarter brogue, it's also in Oxford, quite dressy, and, um, you know, it's, a, it, again, a good example of uh, another designer dress shoe. Now, when you, when you get down to it, this has a rubber sole. Now, this has a very low-profile rubber sole. They call it Day-Night, and um, Day-Night is available on a number of brands, and if you look for this pattern on the sole, um, it, that's generally what it means. There's a, a couple of companies that do this, not just day night. Um, uh, so like if you're getting a Carmina shoe or a, a Meerman shoe, they'll be different. It's a Spanish version of this. Day nights are, uh, the soles are made in England. Um, so most of the English shoes will use day night. Um, um, but a, a lot of shoes in the market will use day night and it's a, it's a great sole. It's very low profile. So when you're not sitting with your legs crossed, um, or, you know, kicking something. <laughs> Nobody's gonna see the bottom of your shoe anyway, um, and uh, they're not gonna know that you're using rubber soles uh, because it looks just like a leather sole, okay? So when you're looking at it from this profile, there's really no difference. And, and so it's, a, it's not a bad op option for you. Now, the next section that we're gonna get into is the semi-brogues. And again, we're looking at Oxfords, and you can get things in Oxfords and Derby's, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But the first semi-brogue, which I'm going to look at, is really a full semi-brogue, and that is the Allen Edmonds Strand. And um, if you look at this here, you can see you've got a medallion, you've got the little quarter brogue piece here, but you also have this brogue line right here, and you have a heel cap on this, and it has the brogue line there, um, and you also have this little strap along the edge here, with brogue line as well down here. Okay. This is a brogue shoe. Now the brogue is just the little holes, okay? So it's easy to see them. And okay, make sure you can see them there. And you've got the, the one hole and then you've got two little holes. So it looks like these little rectangles going around the shoe. Um, very, very classic style. Uh, very less formal than the other two but also still quite a formal shoe, quite a dress shoe. In today's business dress, uh, you could pretty much get away with this anywhere. Um, and it is a, um, a really solid, good performing uh, example of a shoe that you can wear across your wardrobe. Now, the color makes it a little bit less formal. Uh, you're not gonna wear this with a dark uh, navy suit in a formal setting. Uh, you can wear it with navy, uh, because I think the, the color happens to look great with navy, uh, but it's dressing down the formality of a dark navy suit. So some, something to keep in mind if that is your, your particular uh, uh, thing that you want to make sure that you're super, super formal. Uh, if you're like me, I'm, I, I wear suits at work and I try to dress them down. Uh, I don't wear a tie and I'm trying to, uh, um, you know, just have it be, uh, it's a business occasion, but I'm, I'm not trying to be super formal because my clients are not always formal. Sometimes they're business casual. A lot of times they're business casual. So, um, you know, I, I try to keep it uh, as casual uh, as possible. So, uh, great shoe, uh, great versatility. Uh, you can wear this um, with jeans, you can wear this with uh, chinos, and you can wear this with uh, a combination or with a suit. So, a uh, really good example. Now, what I'm not going to do today is I'm not going to talk about loafers. Loafers are actually not um, what I consider to be suit ready. Um, most, form, most suits um, you just wear lace-up shoes with. Um, sometimes I'll wear monk straps, but for the most part I try to stay with lace-ups. And uh, so I, I stay away from slip-ons j just in general. Now that's a personal preference of mine. I know a lot of guys that wear um, loafers with suits. I just don't like the look, so that's just not what I do. Now. 
So we're talking about semi-brokes, and um, you know, semi-brokes are, um, are, are a versatile description of a shoe. So you have your traditional semi-brogue, which is like your full kind of brogue with a cap toe. Um, sometimes they'll call this a straight tip, that's the other name for it. Um, but sometimes you'll have ones that are like this. Now this has the broguing here and this U-throat. This is called an Adelaide. Um, but it also has a medallion on the top. A lot of Adelaides have a cap toe and they either have a medallion or they have the um, quarter brogue uh, medallion like, uh, like I showed you before. Um, now this is black so it's more formal. Um, uh, but it is the Adelaide, which kind of gives it a little bit of a less formal look. Um, I did the lacing kind of crossed, so that makes it a little less formal. It has a rubber sole, so it's a little less formal. But this is not a uh, super, you know, uh, this isn't like a super uh, informal sole. So it's pretty formal as well. Uh, I didn't talk about soles on the other semi broke This one has a combination sole. So again, it has the same look as a regular leather sole but a little bit more traction, a little bit more weather resistance, if, that, if that's important to you. So um, some, something to think about there. So this is um, a really good, this is my formal shoe. This is what I'll wear to anything, even a funeral, um, a wedding, things like that. I'll, I'll wear this. Uh, the Adelaide is basically the new cap toe, uh, the plain cap toe. Uh, it's just, yeah, and that's Justin Fitzpatrick, that's not me. Um, that's, he wrote an article about that uh, last year or the year before. And I've really bought into that. I find that it's really nice. Now, what's nice about this shoe is that it has a different shape in the last. Right? And this is instead of just pure almond shape, which this one is, it has a little bit more of a square to it. And they call that a chisel shape. So really happy that uh, you know I have that option and uh, I feel pretty good about the way that that comes together. So. Um, something to keep in mind as you're as you're looking at examples of shoes uh, it's it's just a uh, um, a different shape and it does fit the foot differently so some people will look at that shape and get different sizing uh, sometimes they'll just be grateful for a little bit more toe room um, but uh, it is something to look for and something that I that I care for so so those are Oxfords now I, I, I limited it to four Oxfords that's not to say that you can't get any of the other styles that I'm looking at in an Oxford as well um, I skipped the whole cut in an Oxford, but I wanted to bring in a whole cut in a uh, derby. And this is actually a blucher. And let me tell you what a whole cut is. A whole cut is made with one piece of leather all the way around. And then if it's a blucher, they sew on these little things here in order to make the eyelets so that you can lace it. And because it's a derby, it laces over the rest of the shoe instead of like an Oxford here where that is actually closed right here. Okay, so that's that's the big difference. Um, so, but um, Oxfords are great. They're very, or, um, and the whole cut Oxfords are great. They're very, very sleek. They're the most formal of all shoes, uh, but they're not necessarily for everybody. I have some, I wear them, I, I love them, I really do. Um, but I wanted to um, really illustrate the whole cut um, uh, derby, or, or in this case, the whole cut blucher. Uh, because I think that it's a, um, a really classic style of dress shoe. Uh, it is a little bit less formal because it is a, it is a derby. Uh, but I, this is, by the way, they call these the plain toe blucher. This is a PTB. And uh, this is a, um, a super example of a formal shoe and a dress shoe that you can wear at work, you can wear with jeans, you can wear in a lot of different settings, and it's extremely versatile. Uh, a lot of brands are really, really well known for this. Churches um, has, a, has a, a shoe called the Church's Shannon, uh, usually made with um, like a corrected grain leather, so they're not corrected grain, uh, with, well, yeah, it is corrected grain leather with a, uh, like a polished surface to it. So super resilient in the rain. They put these big chunky double soles on it. It's, it's just this, the shoe that is impervious to the elements, right? And that's the way it goes. Now this has a leather sole on it, uh, so that which is a more formal sole. This one is actually butyl, okay? And you use butyl in um, really harsh weather. I have to live in Wisconsin, so we get a lot of snow. I like the feel of leather soles, so I wanted something that would last no matter what I wore it in, uh, what weather I wore it in, and this is one that I that I use. So I've worn this in you know three foot snow drifts, and I, I wear it you know in slush on the streets. Uh, and just, uh, you know, this, it takes a lick and it keeps on ticking. It's a great, great uh, uh, type of shoe. So uh, I have a number of uh, plain toes, um, I, uh, derbies. Um, I probably, 
I'm looking at my collection now, embarrassingly, I have, uh, I have 11 of this shoe style. So it's something I'm, I'm really happy about. And uh, um, it, it is a key part of the collection and, and part of what I, I look for when I'm looking at new brands. Now the next one is a wingtip. And you know, there are a lot of different types of wingtips. There's short wings, um, uh, they're, they're, this is a long wing. And now this is a full brogue, and you can get this in an Oxford, or you can get this in a Derby. Um, a long wing blucher um, uh, is a, a really classic style. Now, a lot of times they come with double soles, they're called gunboats, they're big, they're chunky, they're really round. This is a, um, a more classic style. This is on the same last. By the way, the last, as I said before, is the shape, shape of the shoe. This is the same last year, right? I mean, if you, if you didn't look really carefully, I could probably wear these shoes together and nobody would notice, right? But um, these, I, I, this has um, got to be my, my second favorite style of shoe. I, I just really, really love the long wing um, bluchers. And uh, just, uh, I, I, I love the way they feel. I love the way they look. I love the versatility. I've got a pair that's an austerity pair with no broke holes at all. And uh, it's just really, really classic. I love the way that uh, they come together, and I love the way that they they really help dress down an outfit. Um, to uh, you know, and I'll wear these with flannels. I'll wear them with uh, um, really, really thick wools. Uh, I'll wear it with tweeds, and um, I'll even wear it with you know your just you know your super 120s light wool suit, right? Um, and, and I've worn them with linen as well. So there's just a lot of options that you can do with this shoe. It's a classic design. Single sole, a little bit more formal than double sole. Leather sole, I try to do leather sole on most of these, although I do have a couple pairs that are commando soles, which are really big and chunky and great for outdoors. I even have some in suede, which is just a, an awesome way of just adding a huge amount of texture into the shoe. So something that you can do. I'm also getting into grains now. And so I'll get like pebbled grain or I'll get like a hatch grain, something that, that really kind of makes a, a real statement. And you put the broguing and the grains all together. It just looks like a really, really chunky shoe. And I love it. I think that's great. So um, this is the next shoe that I want to talk about. Now this is a split toe derby. Okay. And you can see that it's got this big, huge vamp here. And it's got the sewing here with the toe and, and around on the apron. Uh, they just these are great shoes. They've got a lot of uh, 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 spirit is what I was gonna say, um, but I, I, I meant to say character. And I, I just love the way that they come together. So this is a another example of a shoe that you can wear. Um, now a lot of guys will say that these are too informal to wear with suits. I disagree. I think that these are great for suits. Um, I think that it just uh, it really is a, a classic way of being able to um, have a little bit of uh, texture and a little bit of style um, in your footwear without uh, you know going over the top you know you're not wearing anything bright orange right still a dress shoe still very formal uh, but uh, has a, a classic twist um, that uh, you know not every guy will will wear and so you know if you want to be you know stand out in the crowd but not be weird those are those are a great way to go so all right, I'm going to end today's talk by talking about a full brogue. Now this happens to be a U-tip version of the full brogue, but um, it's got the medallion, it's got the broguing along the side, it just doesn't have the little peak that you would say on a wingtip. So a little bit of a different style. This Alan Edmonds called this the university when they had this in, in production, uh, and, and it was kind of a cool thing because it was university and a U. Um, they put a rubber sole on it, so it was good, presumably for college students that are walking around a lot. Uh, but I really like the shoe. It's one of the favorite ones in the line. And um, I really think that um, a full brogue, uh, and especially a full brogue Oxford, but they do full brogue derbies too, which are just killer looking shoes. Um, there's one by Crockett and Jones that I've just got to have. Super, super good. Uh, but, um, you know, as, as you look at these, um, this is a really good classic. Um, it used to be, you know, the most formal shoe. Like today, most guys wear uh, Capto Oxfords, like I said before, just plain Capto Oxfords. Uh, back in the 30s and 40s, uh, everyone wore wingtips. It was just everyone wore wingtips. Um, I went back and I looked at the year I was born at the Allen Edmonds catalog, and they didn't have wingtips. They had all mug straps. Styles change, 
this is going to be a classic one that's always a, a, a part of the wardrobe that uh, will never go out of style and uh, it just it, it really adds a lot of uh, a little bit of flair to the to the outfit but um, it's not you know over the top so again like I said before it's not like you're wearing orange shoes so really really good classic option for you so this is Wisconsin shoe guy and I know it was a little bit long video but I wanted to uh, give you some options on, on different things that you can incorporate into your wardrobe and and really um, enjoy uh, there this is why I like shoe collecting is because there's a lot of styles that are out there and a lot of options for you to consider so now you can get really really carried away you can try to get different fabrics in each one you can get different colors in each one um, and the shoe manufacturers love that by the way right they'll, they'll put out six colors and then every now and then they'll do a special color and they'll, they'll really you know they, they make it easy for you to invest a lot in your shoes but um, you know what you really want to look for especially when you're starting out is something that's going to get you by in most of the occasions that you're in on a regular basis and then make sure that you have a rotation so that you're not wearing the same shoes a couple days in a row uh, if you're like me and you travel a lot and you're gonna be out in bad weather you got to make sure that if you you know have a pair of shoes it gets completely soaked you have three or four days where it can dry and so then you need you know a third pair of shoes right so just plan ahead be responsible but uh, think about what you want and invest well so that you're able to get uh, the best that you can afford hey this is Wisconsin shoe guy and thank you for watching I am out have a wonderful day